Hi, and welcome to this tutorial on building a full stack web application with Spring Boot and Vaadin Fusion. My name is Marcus. I am the head of the open source community team over at Vaadin. Vaadin Fusion is our new front end framework that's designed specifically for Java backends. It gives you a reactive component based UI model built in TypeScript and fully type safe server integration. So these things combined makes for a really productive and easy, fun way of building web applications. So let's jump right into code and see how this works. All right, so here I'm on start.vaadin.com. I'm using the Fusion tutorial preset. I'll leave a link to that in the show notes so you can open the same one. But essentially what we're doing here is we have one view and one empty view defined with a name to do mapped to the to do URL. And we have configured the application name and the UI stack to use TypeScript plus HTML, meaning that we're going to get a Vaadin Fusion project. We've also set up a database so that we have something we can persist our data to. So go ahead and click on download. Once the file is downloaded, unzip the file, go into the project and open it with your IDE. I'm going to use VS Code because it works really well with both Java and TypeScript, but you can of course use whatever ID you're familiar with and, and comfortable with. Before we get coding, let's take a look at the project structure just so we understand what we have to work with. First of all, we have a front-end folder which includes all the front-end assets. So you can see we have an index.html, uh, which is the bootstrap page. We won't be uh, touching that. We have an index.ts, which is the main TypeScript file. Essentially, this defines our routing. We don't need to touch that either in this tutorial. What we're going to work with are the views here. So we have a main view, which defines the navigation bar and all of that. And then we have the empty to-do view that we defined in the startvon.com. All right. Then under source main, we have our Java backend sources. So we have an application file here, which uh, launches the Spring Boot application. Then we have a data package here with a couple of helper classes and packages where we can put in our code. The final thing to look at is the pom file, which defines our project and dependencies. And we can verify here that checking that add backend checkbox did add a H2 database and Spring Boot Starter PA. All right, so with that, let's get coding. The first thing I want to do is define the data model and the data access layer. So we'll start in the entity package here, create a new file, todo.java. And todo is going to be an entity, and we can extend from this abstract entity to get the ID and hash code and equals that we need for JPA. So I'm going to extend from abstract entity and annotate this with an entity annotation to make it. Uh, eligible for persistence. Now our to-do will have two properties. A boolean for done will initialize that to false. False like that. And then we will have a string for the task that we need to do like that. For the task, I'm also going to add a bean validation annotation saying that this should not be blank. So that way we have a way of validating this both in the UI code and on the server. And finally, to complete this, we're going to generate some getters and setters for both of these. So in your ID, generate the getters and setters uh, for both of those. All right, so now we have something we can persist. Now we need something we can persist it with. So we're going to create in the service package another file to do repo. The repository is something that Spring Data uses to access the database, both to persist and to fetch data. So we can extend from one of the base classes, JPA repository, and this takes in two pieces of type information. First of all, what are we persisting? What is the primary uh, key there? Or what is the ID type? In our case, that would be an integer. Take care of the to-do uh, import. And this is done. So we don't need to actually provide a implementation for this. That's something that Spring Data is going to take care of for us. The next thing we want to do is define how we're going to communicate between the server and our client side. 
Now this is something that's specific to Vaadin Fusion and this is something cool. So I'm gonna go into the endpoint package here and create a to-do endpoint. And this class, we need to annotate with an endpoint annotation. This will turn this class into an endpoint, meaning that all the public methods that we have here will be exposed to the client side as TypeScript methods. It will also auto-generate all the types that we have. So if we have, in our case, a to-do uh, Java object, it will generate a TypeScript interface that matches that so that we have full type safety all the way from our database to our view template. By default, all the endpoint methods require an authenticated user. In our demo, that's not something we want, so I'm going to do anonymous allowed to make them available to everyone. In our to-do endpoint, we need to first of all get a hold of our repository so that we have a way of fetching uh, and saving to-dos from the database. So I'm going to create a constructor here, to-do endpoint, take in the to-do repo, and save that to a field. So I'm going to just assign that to a field like that. And this endpoint will only need to expose two methods for right now, one for fetching all the to-dos and one for saving to-dos. The save method we can use both for persisting new to-dos and to update existing ones. So public list of to-do objects. So we first define the one for uh, finding all the to-dos. Want to make sure we get all the imports correct. And what we're going to do here is we're going to return repo dot find all. So we're just calling the repo to find all. Now in a real application, you would probably not call the repo directly, but instead you would have a service class in between. But for the sake of simplicity here, I'm going to opt to just call the database directly from our endpoint here. The other one, uh, the other method that we want is a save method. And this will return the saved to do object and take in a to do object to get saved. What this does is it returns repo dot save and takes in the to-do that we just got in. Okay, so now we have a interface that we can use from our front-end code to access the back-end. And we'll take a look at how that works in, in just a second. But first, let's go ahead and start the application. So I'm going to use the Maven command in our command line here to get it started. The first time we do this, it will take a little bit of time because it's first downloading all the Maven dependencies, then all the NPM dependencies, and then it's going to compile a front-end bundle. The next time you do this, it'll be much faster, and Vaadin includes live reload, so whenever we're actually coding on the front-end, we don't need to restart the server for every change. Instead, it'll automatically do that for us pretty quickly. So let's wait for this to get started, and then get into the front-end. All right, so we can see we have the same exact application that we had on start.vaadin.com, now running in our browser here. So the next thing we want to do is actually define the to-do view. And the functionality that we want there is we want to be able to add new to-dos, and we want to be able to check off any to-dos that we've already completed. And of course, we want these changes to be persisted to the database so that we can refresh the browser and, and still maintain that state. All right, so let's jump into our code. And again, where we can find this is under front end views to do to do view. So our view component is a class that extends from lit element. Lit element is the base class that we use for all the components in Vaadin Fusion. A component can be either something small and reusable or more often a view like this. Lit element is a reactive UI component library, meaning that we have a view state or component state and a template here in the render method. So whenever we change the state, this uh, render method will get called and the UI will be updated. Uh, we'll take a look at how that works in, in just a second. The other part of uh, creating a view is having this custom element decorator. And this defines which HTML tag name this component will get. And that's something that we can then use in our routing. For instance, here you can see we're using that tag name to map this view to the empty path. Okay, so let's begin by defining our component state. So what should 
let element be listening to and reacting to uh, when re-rendering the template. We'll essentially have a list of to-dos. So we'll have a to-do array and we'll initialize this to an empty array. You can see that we have this to-do now imported from generated and the full Java class path here. And if we look at what we have here, we have an interface that has the same properties as our Java object had. And that's something that Vaden automatically created for us. Now in order for lit element to actually listen for changes to this array, we need to mark it as a property. There are two ways of doing that. So we could either give a property decorator like this, if this was a public API. In our case, this is something that's private and internal to this component, meaning we're not passing in a array of to-do items to this view. Instead, the view will fetch them itself. So I'm going to mark this as an internal property like this. With that, now anytime we change this to-do array, lit element will notice that and re-render this. The other part uh, I want is a binder, which is something that's Vaden specific, a helper for building forms that takes into account all the validation and everything uh, that we defined. So for instance, if you remember that our to do Java has this not blank annotation here, the binder will take care of actually validating that also on the client side, not only on the server. So we'll create a binder, initialize this to a new binder. Binder takes in two things, a context. So which element are we in? In this case, we can refer to this. So the to do view, and the other is a model, which is a description of what we're binding to. It's not the same as this interface because it also includes information on validations, for instance. So for that, there is an auto-generated to-do model that we can bind to like this. Now you can see we have a small block of styles here. Uh, the important thing to remember and that I always forget is setting display to block. So by default, lit element uh, produces web components and web components by default are display inline. And that's rarely what you want. The host selector here refers to this tag itself. So we can set properties on, on the component itself. In this case, I'm also going to add some padding so that the content doesn't touch the edges of it. And I'm going to use a variable, a CSS variable from our Lumo uh, theme. Lumo space, let's do large. And by using the theme variables, I can make sure that my view kind of looks the same as all the other views. It's kind of consistent throughout the application. All right, so now that we have our state here, we want to go into the render method and actually define what our component should output when we add it to the, uh, to the screen. So for that, I'm going to first of all, create a form where we can create new to do's. So I'll give that a class name of form. And in here, I want to use two Vaden components, a Vaden text field and a Vaden button. To use those, I need to go in and import them first. So I'll import Vaden text field. And I'll import Vaden button like that. With those imported, I can use them like any other uh, HTML tag. So Vaden text field and then Vaden button. The button should have a caption of add. And the text field here, I want to use the binder to bind that to the task property of a to do. The syntax looks like this. So you have three dots, and then a JavaScript interpolation. So you can notice that we're within the double backticks here. So this is a JavaScript or a TypeScript template literal. And within those, we can use this dollar sign curly brackets syntax to in, to inject any kind of JavaScript. Here, we're going to call field, which is a uh, helper in the binder. And here we can tell which uh, property on the model we want to bind to. So this dot binder dot model, and then you can see we have the ID, the task and the done. So in this case, we want to bind to task. This field helper will return an object that has several properties. And this spread operator here will apply all of those on the bottom text field in one go. So we don't have to set five different things. Instead, we can just set all of them at once. 
on the button. Let's make it a little bit more stand out by putting a primary theme on it. Again, this is something from the Vaden uh, Lumo theme. And then we need to define what should happen when somebody clicks on it. So we use the lit element at syntax for listening for an event. So at click listens for the click event. And then we can use again the dollar sign curly bracket syntax to bind this to a method. So this dot create to do. Of course, this method doesn't exist yet. So let's go ahead and create that. I'm going to use an async method here. That's something that is included in JavaScript and TypeScript as a very convenient way of dealing with asynchronous code. So in our case, when we call the server, it's going to take a while for that to get back. So we want to release the main thread to do other things, uh, stay responsive uh, while we wait for data. So create to do. And so what I want to do here is I want to have the binder submit itself to the server and then capture the return to do. So what I want to call is the save method here, pass in the to do from the binder and then get the persisted to do with the ID uh, back from it. So const, let's call this saved what we get back. Here we're going to call a wait. So essentially, we're just going to have the code wait for the server response on, in the background and then resume whenever we get a response. And we're going to call this dot binder dot submit to. And then we need to tell it where it should submit to. And we want to submit to the to do endpoint save method. So you can see we have uh, here an auto import for um, the generated to do endpoint like this. Now we can make this a little bit more apparent in our code if, if you like. I, I usually just import the methods themselves, but you could also do import star as to do endpoint like this and then do to do and point dot save to make it a little bit more apparent where the save method is coming from. Then let's check if we did get something back. And if we did, what we want to do is we want to add this saved uh, to do to our array. So we're going to call this dot to do's is equal to a new array containing all the to do's that we had from before, and then the saved to do like so. And then finally, we can go ahead and clear out the binder. So uh, this dot binder dot clear, so that we're ready to input new uh, to do's. Here, it's important to notice that instead of calling uh, this dot to do's dot push, like you would perhaps normally, we need to assign a new array to to do's so that the change detection picks that up. So the change detection only looks for the actual object reference, it doesn't look into the object or the array to see if something changes. Okay, so now we have a way of creating to do's, but we don't really have a way of, of seeing them yet. So let's continue on our code here, and create a new div here for to do's. And what I want to do here is I want to loop over all the to do's that we have in lit element, what we can do is use the normal JavaScript map operator to assign a new HTML sub template for each to do in our array. So this dot to do's dot map. So we get one to do at a time, and we want to map those to an HTML template. So again, we return an HTML template. So same thing as we return from the render method, but just as a as a sub template. And in here, let's do a new div uh, to do. Here I want to have a button checkbox and a span with the task. So again, I'll, I'll go and import button checkbox like that and use it here. Button checkbox. And then we'll have a span containing to do dot task. Now the checkbox, we want to bind a couple of things. We're going to use a Boolean attribute binding here, starting with a question mark, checked, and that should be equal to to do dot done. Then we want to listen for changes to this state. So checked changed is the event that we want to listen to. And 
we're going to get an event here, which is a custom event. And when that gets called, what we want to do is call this dot update to do state, we're going to pass in the to do so we know which to do is has changed. And then we're going to do uh, get the updated value from e dot detail dot value like this. Let's go ahead and declare the method. Here our value, let's call this done. So we're consistent, it will be a Boolean. And then we need to implement this. So what I want to do first of all is create an updated to do. So I'll again, create a new object, const updated is equal to a new object with all the properties from the existing to do and then the updated done value. Again, I'm using the spread operator here, an object spread operator in this case. So I, the curly brackets create a new object, the three dots here, spread out all the properties from this to do. And by defining done here, we override the previous done from here. Uh, done is just a shorthand for for doing essentially this, which is a little bit redundant. So, so with this, we have an updated object now with all the previous properties and the updated done. Now what I want to do in this case, I want to eagerly apply the update in the UI and then call the server to update it there. So first, let's again, update the to do's array. And here I'm going to use the map operator. So this dot to do's dot map. And what I want to do is essentially go through all the to do's, figure out which one is the one that's updated based on its ID and swap that out, leave all the other ones in place. And map by design will always return a new array. So that way we trigger the change of detection. So we'll get the each to do as t. And then we check if the t dot id is equal to to do dot id. If it is, then we'll return the updated one. And if not, then we'll return t itself. So just the existing event or existing to do, I should say. Once that's done, then we're going to call the server. So to do endpoint dot save, and we're going to save the updated uh, updated to do to there. Okay, so let's go ahead and check where we are right now, you can see that we have a text field here, we have a button, we can write something here and save it. You can see it's now getting displayed here. We can check it. But if we refresh, we don't get anything. And that's because we're never initializing the component the first time it gets rendered. So even if our server included all that information, we don't have a way of initializing the component based on it. So for that, we're going to use a component lifecycle method callback called connected callback. I'm going to use an async method again here connected callback like this. It's important that we remember to call the super method. So super dot, uh, connected callback, so that the let element component itself can initialize. And then what we can do is call this dot to do's is equal to await. Again, we're gonna suspend this uh, execution until we get something back from the server and then resume it. So that way we're not blocking what's going on in the thread and we keep the the, the UI responsive. So we await for uh, to do endpoint dot find all like that. So let's save, go into our UI. And now you can see that by the time we got here, it had already live reloaded, and we could actually get back this uh, to do that we had from from before. So um, learn about infusion, we can add that to our to do, we can check it, we can refresh to make sure that everything stays where it should. And that's it. So I hope this was a useful tutorial for you. If you have any questions on using VOD Infusion, please ask those in the comments below. I'll also add a link to our Discord channel. So if you want to come and chat with us, uh, please join us there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.